So a couple of videos back, I briefly mentioned what the web development process was. And it was a process that produced a piece of software to be used on or through an internet connection. So everything from a basic web page to things like Slack or Discord or even in-browser video games. So don't think of a website as simply a site you're visiting. Think of it as a piece of software you're using through the internet. And so we have a process, a process of planning, developing, and deploying a piece of software to be used through the internet. But what exactly are we working on? How do we structure this process? How do we divide the labor? In web development, we have two main domains for that. We got the front end and we got the back end. We are going to tackle the back end first. So what is the back end of web development? Well, this is where we handle persistent data. That is data that we need to exist outside of our users one session with our app or our website. What does that mean? Well, let's say we have a sign up form. So the user signing up for our site or for our app. They're filling out a form with a username or an email and a password. We need to store this data somewhere other than our user's local machine. If we store it on their machine and their machine dies, they lose it, maybe they uninstall the app to reinstall it, we might lose that information. And so the back end is where we handle and manage information that we need available even when the user is not available. And there are two main structures in the back end that help us do that. We call them the REST API and the database. Let's tackle the database first. What is a database? Database is simply a computer or a network of computers that specializes in large amounts of storage space and the means to manage that storage space. And so you could think of a database as a stripped down version of your computer. No fancy graphics, no fancy sound cards, just a hard drive or hard drives, a CPU, a minimal GUI, and a or a shell used to manage um, how, where, and what information gets stored. Now what's a REST API? A REST API is actually two concepts merged or coupled into one. We got the REST part and we got the API part. What is REST? REST stands for Representational State Transfer. And it's simply an architectural convention or a way of structuring a program designed to transfer information from your back end to your front end and from your front end to your back end. What does that mean? All REST is, is a set of rules that tell you how you should go about programming a specific type of program. And that type of program's job is to transfer data from your back end to your front end and from your front end to your back end. Now why are we following these REST rules or this REST convention? Well, it's highly likely that you're not going to be the only developer that needs access to your database in order to build out a front end. And it's highly likely that your REST API and your database are not the only REST APIs and database out there. There are hundreds of thousands of them. And so if every developer programmed their own REST API the way they saw fit, that means every other developer would have to understand how that developer thinks about transferring data over the web from front end to back end and back end to front. It would be absolute chaos. And so for that reason, we agree to follow a sort of convention. This is the REST convention. It follows or it's based on HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And so what's an API? An API is an application programming interface. It's basically a set of tools created by developers for developers to help us develop or create our apps or our web pages, front end, back end, doesn't matter. And so you could think of it like a restaurant. You go to the restaurant and you sit down and you have a meal. Now the chef has tools, a knife, uh, pots, pans that they use to create your meal. You never interact with the chef's tools. Those tools are for the chef only to create your meal. You just consume the end product. In a similar way, or the exact same way, an API is a set of tools used by developers, for developers, that we use to develop our apps or our web pages and the end user never sees. And so you could think of a REST API like a shipping company. So a shipping company and on the right here we have the database or the warehouse where we keep all of the the cargo these are boxes and on the left side we have us the developer or the user not the user in the sense of uh, using our program but the user of the shipping company a customer of the shipping company 
And so we tell the shipping company what we need from the warehouse or the database. The shipping company fetches it for us and then brings it back to us. This middleman is what the REST API is. And REST tells us how do we build the shipping company? How many doors do we need? Where do the doors go? How many security guards do we need? Where do the security guards go? How many trucks do we need? That's what REST is responsible for. REST API is the middleman in between us and the goods, us and the sensitive data, us and the cargo. Now we could, 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 could go directly from our front end to our database. Don't ever do that. On the front end, all that code is visible. So you don't handle sensitive business logic on the front end. Instead, we go through our REST API because our REST API does error checking, it does validation checking, it does authorization checking. If we test out or pass the tests, then we get access to the goods. The goods go back through the REST API and then back to us. We need a middleman, a security guard. That's what the REST API is. And that's what the back end is. A place where we hold persistent data that we need available even when the user's not available. Now, what is the front end? The front end is a lot easier to understand. It's basically the user experience. What elements get put on screen? Where do they get put? What's the layout? What do they look like? How about navigation flow? Once they sign up, where do they go? Maybe like a welcome page? How about error pop-ups? How about information pop-ups? Everything the user sees basically gets handled by the front end. You can think of the front end like a house. Uh, you got appliances, you got your wallpaper, lights, um, fridges, all that stuff. The back end is like the sewage pipes and the electrical wiring. We need the back end to make the front end more personal for the user. Now here you're asking, Where's the JavaScript? I thought this series was full stack web development with JavaScript. Where oh where is the JavaScript? Do we use it in the front end? Do we use it in the back end? Where is the JavaScript? Well, we use it in both the front end and the back end. On the front end, JavaScript works with two other languages, not programming languages, these are scripting languages. So we have HTML, hypertext markup language, and we have CSS cascading style sheets. And so HTML works by using tags to display elements on screen. So anything from images and paragraphs to headers. And CSS comes in, it styles these elements, gives them uh, fonts, font weights, you can manipulate the layout as well. And so the HTML and CSS give us this visual of a website. The JavaScript provides interactivity between the user and the HTML. And so a lot of the vibrancy of the web, of a website that you take for granted, uh, animation transitions, maybe you click on a button and some sort of visual effect happens. Maybe you're scrolling down a list and the new items, instead of just popping in, they fade in. All of that stuff is done by JavaScript. Now JavaScript on the back end is a bit of a different beast. We can do what we do on the front end with JavaScript on the back end, and we call this server-side rendering. We're not going to get into that right now. But primarily on the back end, JavaScript is a legitimate programming language. And so it's more data structure heavy, um, more library heavy. It's like legitimate programming. And so that's where I'm going to stop for now, because we went over a lot. And what did we go over? Well, we have an idea that we divide the workload for a full stack application between the front end and the back end. And the front end is responsible for what the user sees and the back end is responsible for important persistent data. We need to give the user a more personal experience to remember them. Profile settings, profile pictures, login settings, persistent data that we need to create a more personal, uh, vibrant interaction between the user and our application, the user and our website. We also have a very vague idea of how JavaScript is used on the front end and the back end. On the front end, it's used to provide that interactivity between the user and your website. And on the back end, it's used like a legitimate programming language. We use it to program our, our REST API. So how do we go about doing those things? Well, we're going to take a look at that in like two videos. We need an actual page to work on. And so in the next video, we're going to look into uh, HTML and CSS. We're going to build a form, some basic stylings. In the video after that, we're going to inject some JavaScript. And so like always, if you find any value in this, you like, comment, share, subscribe, thumbs up, whichever platform you're watching this on. And I will see you guys in the next one.